What's up, Cal gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So let's solve this problem. So we're given this beam with a distributed triangle load here, and we're given that our max shear stress, our max normal stress, I mean, bending stress, uh, is um, 22 ksi. And then we're also given this cross section of it, and we want to find the largest W naught, right? The largest distributed load, so that the stress doesn't exceed that 22 ksi. So yeah, so I had to solve this. So first of all, we need to find where moment is maximized, right? We know that bending stress is equal to moment times distance away divided by inertia. So the things we don't know, right, are moment and inertia. So we need to figure out where the moment is going to be largest in this beam here. So to do that, we need to do a moment body diagram. So let's go ahead and let's try to do that. So first of all, let's find our support reactions. So we know that there's going to be Right, let's label this section A, and then we know that this is going to be B. So let's label this B of Y and A of Y. So we can tell that this beam is symmetrical, right? It's cut down the center, so we know that A and Y and B and Y are going to be the same. We can do a whole lot of other, you can do the force bond diagram in moments, but to save time, we can say it's symmetrical. So we know that some of the forces in the Y has to equal zero. And if we're going to add them up, right, it's going to be a of y plus b of y, or they're going to be the same. So let's just say 2 a of y, because a of y and b of y can get added together. And then minus w naught times, times its distance, right? 24 feet. Then divide it by 2 because it's a triangle. So you're going to find that a and y is equal to b of y, like we said earlier. This is going to be equal to 12, then divide it by 2. It's going to be equal to 6 w naught. So now let's go ahead and take our cuts for a moment body diagram. So let's go ahead and look at the section in between 12 and zero feet. All right, so we're starting at A of Y and we're moving to the right. Let's make a force body diagram. All right, yeah. So let's put this down. So we have A of Y here and we're going out. And what do we have? So we have force, let's use red. Red to put my forces. So we have AY going up, and this is going to be 6 W naught. Then we have this distributed triangle load going down. And if we want to represent how big this is, we can use W naught X divided by 12. This is basically what this peak of the point is here as we move to the right. And right as we move this way, we're getting bigger with x. So this works out because once we reach x is equal to 12, we're just at w naught, but it's a linear line, so we can keep it as that slope basically being x over 12. So then what we need to draw in is our moment. So our moment goes like this. So let's write an equation for what this is going to look like. So if we do some of the moments around that point is equal to zero, what do we have? Well, we have the moment, and then the six uh, force is pushing us clockwise. So we need to subtract six W naught, and then multiply it by that distance away, which is X. Then we have this distributed triangle load, which is gonna make us wanna rotate counterclockwise, so we're gonna add it. So the magnitude of that, like we said here, is W naught, x divided by 12. Then we need to multiply it by x again to get basically uh, the amount of force that it's acting. So we're gonna do that, but then we need to divide it by two because it's a triangle. So this is our force here. This is how much force this triangle is enacting depending on how far x we've gone. But then to, uh, on top of that, we need to make sure that we multiply it by its distance away from the center. So the center of mass of a triangle is a third of the way down from its top. So that means that its distance is going to be one third of x. So we're going to do x divided by three to get its distance and set that all equal to zero. So then if you simplify things and clean it up, you're going to get that moment, right? You're going to move these over. You're going to get that moment is equal to w naught. You can factor out a w naught from both of these. And it's going to be x, negative x to the third from this divided by 72 plus 6x. So this is our moment equation from zero to 12 feet. Now, let's go ahead and try to graph this. So 
this is x in feet. And this is moment in, uh, what is this in length? Pound feet? KSI. Or not in KSI, kid feet. All right, so we're like this. So how are we gonna graph this? Well, it's a cubic function. And one more thing we know is it's gonna be symmetrical, right? If we took the moment diagram, it would be the same on this side as it is on this side. So we know that whatever's happening from zero to 12, it has to be reflected across the x-axis. So here's 12, whatever's happening here is gonna be reflected. Okay, um, so what's it gonna be? Well, let's plug in points. So if we plug in x is equal to zero, we get moment is equal to zero. So we're gonna start at zero, and that means we're gonna end at zero. Then we have a negative cubic function, so we know it's gonna be concave down, basically, for this section. Or we can figure that out by graphing it. So if you plug in a point, let's plug in 12, for example. If you plug in 12, you get that it's equal to 48 w naught, right? So moment becomes 12, or 48 w naught. So we're gonna be kind of doing a cubic concave down function like this, the peak of 48 w naught. Then of course, because it's reflective, it's gonna get reflected back down like that. So this is what our moment body diagram looks like, our moment diagram looks like. Uh, and why do we do this? Well, we're trying to find uh, the largest w naught so the stress doesn't exceed uh, bending stress max. And bending stress is maximized where moment is maximized. So we found the place where moment is maximized is right in the center of the beam, and it's equal to 48 w naught. So this is an important number to write down. So we're going to write moment max. Can't write today, apparently is equal to 48 w naught. That's what we did all this work for, so let's go ahead and clean it up, and let's work on finding the moment of inertia, right? So that's the only other unknown that we could have left to solve for. So to solve for moment of inertia, we're gonna be using um, parallel axis theorem. So this is from, um, you know, this is from statics. So the equation is i is equal to i bar, basically. And we're looking around the center of mass. That's where we're gonna take our moment, our, our moment of inertia around. And so just looking at the image, we know that it's gonna get divided in half because it's symmetrical across the x-axis, basically. So y bar, and we can say this is equal to half of the height. So the height is gonna be 10 plus 0 0.6. So the height is 10.6. So the y bar has to be equal to 5.3 inches. So we're gonna do i bar plus area distance away, basically, the distance from that center of y bar. So i bar, if you don't remember this, for a rectangle, is gonna be 1 half, 1 12 base height cubed. So this is what we're gonna do for each one of them. So let's go ahead and solve this. All right, so we can factor out the 1 12, and let's just do this part first for all of them. So first of all, let's start with the tall one. Its uh, base is 0 0.3 inches, and its height is 10 inches, so 10 to the third. Then we have these two shapes, this top and this bottom, right? We're splitting it up like this. So first of all, we did this tall one, and then we're doing these two horizontal ones. So those two are symmetrical. They're the same exact one. So they're gonna have the same equation, so we can basically factor out a two and just do it the same. So two times their base, which is eight inches, times their height, which is 0 0.3 inches, and we have to cube that. All right, so then we need to do the area distance from the y. So starting with this tall rectangular one, its center of mass is at the same location as the center of mass of the whole figure. So distance in the y is gonna be equal to zero, so we don't have to do this part for this one in the center, but we do have to do it for these two. Now distance in the y for these two shapes they're gonna be identical because they're both equal distance from the center of mass of the whole shape. So again, we can factor out a two, so we can just do two. So for each one of their areas, we're gonna do base times height, so eight inches times height, 0 0.3, and then distance in the y squared. Oh, I forgot to square this, whoops. All right, distance in the y squared. So what's this center of mass, right? This center of mass is gonna be half, we're going up from the bottom, it's gonna be half of 0 0.3 inches, so 0 0.15 is the center of mass for that one. And then this one is 5.3, so we're just gonna subtract 
Now it doesn't matter which one you do first because it's gonna square, so the negative is gonna get canceled either way. So this is the, basically just the distance from the center of mass of those bottom rectangles to the center of mass of the whole shape. So this is the equation you end up with now. So solve this and you get that by y bar is equal to 152.334 inches to the fourth. All right, so now we can finally go back to this bending equation here. We're getting this max. We're trying to find where its max line. Do we know that its max it can be is 22? So we're gonna just go ahead and put that there. And then we're gonna write this equation out. So moment is what we found, 48 w naught. And this is in KSI, or KIP feet, right? So if this is in KIP feet, we wanna convert it to inches because this is in KSI, which is in square inches. So we need to multiply by 12. And then y, which is, this is distance in the y from the max point. So the further out you get from the center mass, the bigger the bending stress is. So we want to go as far out as possible, which is just going to be 5.3 inches from the center of mass. So we're going to put 5.3 here. And on the bottom goes the moment of inertia, 152.334. All right, so then all we have is this W0, and that's what we're solving for. So all you have to do is multiply this number and divide by those numbers. Write simple algebra here, and you get that W0 is equal to 1.10 kip feet. And there we go, we solved the answer. So, right, it's a lot of steps. We had to do two whole things, basically just to be able to use this equation. But once you get the hang of it, right, not too tricky. So feel free to check out my channel. I've got a whole lot of problems just like this one, finding moment of inertia, finding uh, the bending moment diagrams, and all sorts of stuff like that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.